This is a four-year-old girl who presented to the emergency room with fever, uh, not wanting to eat, and was somewhat toxic appearing, and had symptoms suggestive of uh, pharyngitis, and the study was done to look for evidence of a retropharyngeal abscess. We use contrast-enhanced CT in this clinical setting, and beginning in the nasopharynx, there is obvious uh, enhancement and uh, hypertrophy of the lymphoid tissue within the nasopharynx. That's uh, somewhat abnormal. And as the images approach the low nasopharynx, there is already some abnormal soft tissue swelling and cellulitis in the retrostyloid parapharyngeal space, not the carotid space, the retrostyloid parapharyngeal space, as the surgeons refer to it. And more inferiorly, it becomes clear that in addition to the cellulitis, there is a uh, separative retropharyngeal lymph node. It's medial to the carotid artery. It's in the right position. There's surrounding cellulitis. So this is pharyngitis with separative retropharyngeal adenitis. This node measured a little bit under uh, three centimeters in size, around two and a half centimeters in size. And uh, it is associated with retropharyngeal edema, not retropharyngeal abscess. This is retropharyngeal edema spreading across the retropharyngeal space. Moving over to the images through the neck, we can continue to follow that separative lymph node as it displaces the structures in the carotid sheath, not the carotid space. The retropharyngeal edema, not abscess, retropharyngeal edema becomes more apparent. There's some edema actually uh, spreading into the adjacent prevertebral muscles. Since this is inflammatory disease, it easily becomes transcompartmental. There's no significant suppurative adenitis, and there's no evidence uh, either on the sections up near the skull base or on the sections continuing through the neck uh, to suggest occlusion of the jugular vein. Also, there's no finding anywhere to suggest significant airway encroachment. So the emergency room was uh, notified that there was no retropharyngeal abscess. There is a separative retropharyngeal lymph node. It is of a size that can be medically managed successfully. The otolaryngology service was consulted. The patient was put on intravenous antibiotics. Then the patient defervesced and began eating about 24 hours later, and this situation resolved without the need for surgery. So in summary, a separative retropharyngeal lymph node due to pharyngitis that resolved with a combination of intravenous and oral antibiotics only.